Hey everybody, Barry here again. And I really need to get those injectors on the Cadillac. So we're gonna zoom through this as quickly as possible. My first method was holding the wire onto the battery with a little stopwatch next to me for 10 seconds and kind of trying to judge it like that. And that's really hard to be consistent and accurate. So a buddy of mine, thank you, Dwayne, lent me this little machine. It's a timed switch that you know, you hook up your positive, negative trigger wire, ground, normally closed, normally open. And it's got this little dial right here that goes from one second to 10 seconds. So if I hook this up to my injector wire trigger, when I touch the trigger wire to activate it, it'll turn on for whatever I set it at, which is going to be 10 seconds, and then automatically shut off. So the injectors will be on for a correct amount of time every time I do the test, and it'll be nice and consistent, because I want to have these matched as even as I can. Alrighty, got the relay wired up. This is the relay that's going to be controlled by our switch. And I have it hooked up to a ground trigger so that when I supply a ground to this switch, it'll supply the relay. So I've got the two powers wired together and they'll come down here to the positive. The injector ground will go where it normally goes to the negative. And the ground trigger wire from the relay will go down here to either normally closed or normally open, depending on which one. I have to test both and see what each one does and our trigger wire will then activate this relay, which will control the injectors. So to test our relay, just to make sure that this one works, this is our ground activated relay. I have power to the rail relay hooked up, ground to the injectors hooked up, and when I touch this wire on the ground, it works great. So we know that side of it works. So to test this switch here, normally closed or normally open I'm gonna hook up a well, I'm gonna hook it up to beep this is awfully dirty but of course if we touch two contacts together we get a beep so I'm gonna check the function of each terminal on a normally closed normally open and we'll see what it does so we have our common ground no beep on normally open and it beeps on normally closed. So we're gonna turn it to normally open. That way it won't turn on until I turn on the trigger. So then it'll be normally open until I hit the trigger then it's closed. I'm gonna to try to not to make this confusing, but what we have is our power, which is our green, hooked up down here, ground down to here, our normally open, which is our ground reference for our, our relay, hooked up. Common ground, which is the C right here, goes to the ground down here. All that does is makes this connection for the ground to turn on the relay. And it does it over a certain time, of course, with the timer switch down here. Power going out to our injectors is the pink wire. Injectors are grounded back here. Everything's all good. I think we can do a test now. All right, so I'm no electronics expert. I'm no big nerd. I just want to make stuff work. And this is kind of cool, actually. I just take this trigger wire, tap it on there, and watch. I used a signal light relay by accident. And it's kind of cool. Assuming this doesn't fill up those, there you go. So that was pretty cool. I used a flasher relay by accident, the one I picked out of a bucket, and it actually kind of mimicked the way injectors would fire. So that's pretty sweet. I'm gonna hook it up to a solid relay now because I'm not quite sure if the flashing is consistent on the flasher relay. So I'm gonna go on back to do it a static test with a regular four pin relay. All right, I finally got it to go for 10 seconds. The resistor wasn't zero to 10, it was like to 30 or something. So I had to go messing around with a little bit with a timer. So let's check it out. Right on. 
And let's check our results. Hard to tell if they're all even or not because everything is all tippy here and stuff. So let's check with the measuring cup. So we're basically right on 120 milliliters for that one. So injector number one is, is 70 pounds per hour. 68 and a half, but why not round up? Injector number two is 120. Really happy with how even we are so far. And here we are. We're all right around 120 milliliters. So these four are nice and even so far. And none of them look like they're leaking or anything. So we're in good shape. We got four so far. Nice part about having a setup like this is you can just change out injectors without having to go disassembling anything. Just unplug, pop the clip off, pull the injector out, and pop new ones in. You're ready to go again. Another four loaded up. Just gonna prime the system to make sure there's no air in it. Okay, now that we're sure there's no air in the rail, I'll start it over and our actual test. Our spray looks pretty consistent except for this one. It seems to be coming off a little bit. They all seem relatively consistent from there. And let's see what we have. The last four were all 120 milliliters. Settle a little bit. And we're just below 120 on this one, it looks like. Unless it's not level. Yeah, we're right on 120, so that's fine. Best part about this, we don't have to keep replenishing our methyl hydrate because I just pour it back into the bucket. Uh, that's 120. That's why it's so hard to tell with all the jars set side by side. Because they look like they're uneven. Oh, that one's high. So that one's almost 130. And that one's a touch higher, but just about 120. We know these three match our previous injectors, which are over here. So I do have two more. This one did spray more, uh, around 10 milliliters more maybe. So I'm gonna replace this injector with one of these and see what we come up with. And we have an injector dripping. So that's no good to us either. I've already got the fuel system primed and bled. I'm only going to be taking record from two of these injectors, but I'm going to have all four connected and working just to make sure that the pressure difference of only two injector firing rather than four doesn't mess with the readings or anything.
All right, let's see what we have. Geez, we're high on this one too. We've got 125-ish there too. Seem to be a little bit high on this one, but not as bad. So these two were only a couple milliliters higher. And I think what I'm going to do is put those on number seven and number eight. Because according to a lot of LS guys, the two back cylinders are always lean. So why not have a little touch extra fuel back there? And here we have our eight injectors that all flow at approximately 78 to 80 pounds per hour. The two rear ones here that were a little bit extra, I have marked with a zip tie, so I know they're for the rear. And so this is the total flow bench. As for cost, if you got a couple of parts, extra filter, extra Chevy fuel pump hanging around, and you know, some harness stuff, rail like that, it's not a lot to it. And there's no real big brain stuff. It's only volume over time and do a little bit of math. Computer will help you with that. It's no big deal. So on that note, we're going to call it a night. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great night.